Jace Tunnel here. This episode, we're going to be talking to you about illegal fishing. And we've got a lot of stuff that washes up here, uh, including different types of floats that are used in the long line uh, industry. Uh, also, gill nets, which are illegal in the US. Uh, there are some state agencies that use them for, uh, you know, actually going out and monitoring things like that. But, uh, you know, if we find those, that kind of stuff washed up, uh, that's usually from uh, fishermen down in Mexico. And uh, the best thing you can do when you find something like this is try to get it off the beach because once the tide comes up, it'll be submerged. And I have seen sea turtles that are caught up in these nets, uh, even if it's only like six inches to a foot deep here. So um, we call this ghost fishing because uh, this net, when it was out in the water, nobody was checking it and it was still fishing. And so it's still catching, you know, whatever, you know, sometimes dolphins can get caught in these, uh, all different types of uh, fish species. So this is real bad news to be able to see this on the beach. I'm gonna try to dig it out and uh, pull it up on the beach uh, to get it out of here. So if you look at this boat over here, uh, it actually says Matamoros on here. So obviously, you know, uh, Matamoros is uh, at the border of Texas, so in Mexico. And this boat is full of sand. It has been up here a while. Actually, I know that this boat has been on this beach for, um, for years. And uh, so, but this might have been used uh, for illegal fishing because this is the typical kind of boat they call a lancha or a panga. And um, they usually have a hand tiller motor on it. Uh, this would be filled up with, uh, you know, gill nets or long line equipment and they go out and they snapper fish. That's one of the key targets they have. Well, what if you've got a bunch of fishermen in here and they're going out and collecting tons of fish? Uh, that could be a big problem for the fisheries and it impacts us here in the U.S. So the Heart Research Institute actually has a project going on where they're working with the Coast Guard and Texas Parks and Wildlife and they're, they're looking at the fish and they're looking at the equipment and trying to figure out, you know, what can be done about the problem. So let's go and let's talk about uh, some of the, uh, uh, let's, let's talk with the Coast Guard, let's talk with Parks and Wildlife, and let's talk with the Heart Research Institute researchers to see what's being done. So let's go check it out. So the Heart Research Institute has partnered with Texas Parks and Wildlife and the Game Wardens along with the U.S. Coast Guard to enumerate this issue. And so we don't have a really good handle on the exact number of fish that are leaving uh, to go back to Mexico by these launches. And so our partnership's goal is to actually quantify that and get an exact number or poundage that's leaving. Uh, the big picture here is uh, making people aware that illegal fishing is happening in the South Texas coast uh, and the impact that it's having to our ecosystem uh, and in particular to our fishing community. Uh, the loncheros come into our waters illegally, they take the fish illegally and they go back to Mexico and they sell it back to us for a profit. Uh, American fishing vessels uh, are very invested in making sure that the stock is well preserved. They pay taxes, they, you know, they do everything to maintain this fishery. The illegal fishing does not do that. And so this is a, a major threat to our, our food uh, and a lot of people's ways of life. So illegal fishing is a broad subject. And specifically what we want to address on, on this segment is illegal marine fishing, saltwater fishing. And so what we've got, we've got a term called IUU. And that's illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing gear. Uh, which is illegal fishing practices. Whenever you've got the saltwater environment, you, you've got agencies that are doing sampling that are keeping an eye on the fisheries so we can manage and sustain these fisheries for the enjoyment of right now and in the future. So when we have this IUU gear, this illegal gear out there, it throws these sampling processes off because there's no way to accurately measure how much of the resource is coming out so we can set future sustainability practices for legal, legal fisheries. Uh, so with the IUU gear, we're, we're, we're seeing a, a increase in it and we're seeing an increase in it mainly along the Texas-Mexico border, uh, which we are actively trying to combat along with our other partners, you know, uh, NOAA, U.S. Coast Guard. It's a, kind of an all hands on deck so to speak, uh, you know, practice that we're, we're trying to get together and trying to put a stop to it. 
So until recently, all of the counts have been estimated. We don't have an exact number. So our job is to come in and get exact counts of fish per boat that the Coast Guard has interdicted and then to get an, a weight and length so we can make that estimation into quota and get that direct comparison to how it directly would be impacting recreational and commercial fisheries. Uh, the most common fish we see, of course, are shark. Uh, shark is, is a very common, uh, you know, in all sorts of species. Uh, shark is a very common fish and red snapper. Red snapper is the second, uh, you know, most common fish. And what these IUU uh, folks will do is they will set species specific lines, long lines is what we call them. And they will either set them on top, which will catch mainly sharks, or they'll set them on bottom, which will catch mainly snapper. But during this process, they're catching everything else as well. They're catching turtles, they're, they're, they're catching everything in there. But they do have specific long lines where they're going after targeted species. So, but sharks and snapper, those are the top two, most definitely. So we don't have an, an accurate estimate on how much fish are actually being taken out. That's where we hope some of these crucial partnerships with the Heart Research Institute is going to come into play so we can get a better idea and uh, all parties concerned, because this, this is everybody's priority, can get an accurate representation with this data on a statistical number of, of how much illegal fish is coming out. So ho we hope to get that answer to you very soon uh, with some very crucial partnerships uh, to, to see what we can come up with. So one way way that they're able to go out and try to catch illegal fishermen, there's a number of different ways they have. They actually have uh, big boats, they can go on overnight trips. Another way is they've actually got helicopters. So let's go up in this helicopter and see what we can see today. Can you hear us? Very good. I can hear you. Our aviation wardens, uh, our pilots with your Texas game wardens, use this for a variety of instances, including search and rescue and including some IUU. Uh, some IUU cases where we're able to, from the shore, you know, with the capabilities that we have in the camera, to spot some of that uh, ghost gear that we were talking about earlier, some of that abandoned gear, and hopefully be able to point the vessels in the right direction when we get out there and pick it up before it causes any further damage uh, for some of these potential impacted species. Okay, so that was it, the helicopter ride. Let's go into the next thing. This project's really important because as um, these fish are leaving illegally, it affects the domestic quota. So how many fish people here in the United States, especially in Texas, can harvest. Red snapper is already a controversial managed species. We've gone through state management and divided the quota between the states. We've got a division between commercial and recreational, now private rec and for hire. So this quota keeps getting chopped up. And then we have almost that same amount of quota leaving out the back door. Um, at one point, red snapper season was three days in the Gulf of Mexico. And so, you know, that more fish were leaving to Mexico than were being harvested by United States citizens. Um, so this is project's really important to really get a, an accurate estimate on this. That way we can start to really have an effective management for this population. Yeah, the numbers on the front are from, you know, the years that they've been interdicted, date times that they've been interdicted. You'll see some of them say failure to heave two on the front or F2, H2. That means that there was a non-compliant vessel who tried to evade uh, interdiction. Um, further, you see kind of on deck is the most common type of gear that we run into. It's this long line gear. So there'll be uh, hundreds of hooks that are on small leaders. The long line itself can be miles long and they'll deploy that gear as they, um, once they are north of the maritime boundary line, let it soak for a few hours, maximize their catch. And then what they'll do is they'll take that catch and then return right back to Mexico with it. So the Coast Guard's role in illegal, unreported, and unrelated fishing is the coordination and a response to it the awareness of it, so developing a domain awareness, and then responding to it with enforcement efforts. Say two, three miles off our port now. The number of vessels that we interdict each year can vary uh, from anywhere from 50 to 100 vessels. And the reason why we see that kind of difference is the number of detections that are made. So as our ability to detect the activity continues to grow, so does our interdiction numbers year to year. 
Yeah, we're often asked what do we do with these vessels once they've been interdicted, and the answer is we seize them. They'll come here to South Padre Island where they'll be held by 45 days per a State Department agreement, and if the vessel's not claimed within 45 days, then it'll be destroyed. The types of illegal fishing will vary from season to season, depending on what the fishermen are after. Um, the types of fishing that we typically find throughout the season here is going to be red snapper, shark, it's going to be longline gear. It can be anywhere from a you know, mile offshore to 50 plus miles offshore. We occasionally find gill net, which is illegal in U.S. waters, and that'll be usually more near shore and different types of fish. Once we have found uh, an illicit activity that can include illegal, unreported, or unregulated fishing offshore, we will have to coordinate a response to that. So using the right resources to get to where that activity is taking place, to interdict that activity, and then board and seize those vessels if they are indeed fishing illegally. That can look like a couple of different things, uh, from anywhere from using our fast response cutters, which operate offshore and can cover from anywhere from 50 to 200 miles offshore, or using some of our more nearshore assets like our small boats. So doing a coordinated response here from the station, working with Texas Parks and Wildlife, going out there and finding that vessel, then boarding it and seizing it. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult problem and I've been asked many times, what is the ultimate solution to stopping this types of activity? And we can continue to enforce it, we can continue to enforce it, but I think what we need to do is we need to understand the problem at a different level that this isn't just sustenance fishermen who have kind of waywardly, you know, haphazardly entered into U.S. waters. This is organized criminal activity that occurs south of the border. They're not coming here, uh, grandma and grandpa, to fish for their family, to put you know, fish on the, on the table at the end of the day. They're coming here in an organized fashion with the plan to commit crimes, which is taking of fish illegally from our seas. And that activity is very lucrative for them and it's backed by transnational criminal organizations. So the funding that is, happens through this activity goes back to fund further criminal activity south of the border. What we really need to understand better is our regional numbers. So that's where the work with the Heart Research Institute becomes important. So we can quantify and understand that problem here locally within our waters. Uh, I think the scope of the illegal fishing problem is, is uh, very misunderstood. Uh, in 2022, we got 87 launches. Uh, we detained 373 uh, illegal fishermen uh, that had a total of 15,000 pounds of catch, and that's not even a drop in the bucket. Uh, so I think it's really important that people realize that the amount of illegal fishing directly impacts the amount that you as an American citizen are allowed to catch and retain, and especially the potential negative impacts to this uh, very sensitively balanced ecosystem. So I would just hope that uh, more information people educate themselves on and uh, hopefully we can do something together. I, the goal for any enforcement effort is the absolute abolishment of any illicit activity, but that's pretty you know lofty goal and objective. So. We'll continue to serve as a deterrent factor. We'll continue to enforce our laws and treaties, and we'll continue to patrol the area until we get to the point where the consequences far outweigh the risks for them, and they will no longer fish in our waters. I would uh, want the public to make themselves uh, aware of the illegal fishing, the sheer amount of illegal fishing that's happening along the border. Uh, and once they become aware, uh, I would hope that they would join uh, any of the coastal conservation groups or any kind of the fishing groups uh, so that they can learn about sustainable fishing practices and why this illegal fishing is so harmful. Okay, so uh, that's it for uh, the illegal fishing episode for beachcombing. I hope y'all learned something. Uh, me personally, it's great to know that we've got uh, the Coast Guard, we've got uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and then the Heart Research all working together to try to solve this problem because it affects everybody. So. Hopefully you can tune in with us next time. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.